been circulated with a, a further sheet during the, uh, the break we just had. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes, so Evan, over to you. Welcome. Uh, kia ora. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I uh, am, am co-chair of the Avon Otakura Network. I'm also here as an ex-red zoner, so I went through the red zoning experience. Um, Avon Otakura Network is um, primarily focused on the regeneration of the eastern flatlands, and in, the, in particular the Avon Otakura residential red zone lands, and, and would include South Shore within that. As you're probably aware, there's three distinct um, areas of, of red zone lands in Christchurch, um, the Brooklands um, uh, red zones, Port Hills, and the Avon Otakura. So this is focused primarily on Avon Otakura. Um, I thank my uh, colleagues and, and fellow submitters that have uh, um, presented before me here. Um, we have a, a consistent theme running through this, and I'm going to add to that now, that natural environment and natural and environmental regeneration must be part of the purposes of the Regeneration Act. <coughs> the Act, as currently drafted, repeats the same mistakes of the draft recovery strategy. The natural environment has been omitted. It needs to be included. We need to protect, nurture and restore the natural environment in the regeneration of Christchurch by giving it space to regenerate itself, similar to what Ashley has just been saying. So that in turn, the environment can protect us from natural hazards and nurture and restore our community well-being, particularly of the most impacted communities in the east of Christchurch. To be truly sustainable, economic regeneration must be multiple bottom line. It needs to include environmental, cultural and social as well as financial dimensions. The second point is around a recommendation, a very strong recommendation that the Crown writes off the red zone lands. And we want to put in a, a, a slight revision to what we submitted in our written submission. And I'd like to read the wording of that. This has been developed by our colleagues in Eastern Vision. Eastern Vision has a, a remit which is somewhat wider than the Avon Otakura red zone lands, but we work closely together. It is our recommendation that the Crown be asked to write off its remaining dollar investment in the Avon Otakura red zone lands and then transfer its ownership of the land for one dollar to a new appropriately structured trust with settlers' wishes that at a minimum require the trust to protect, preserve and develop the site for best community use in consultation with the community and that if any land is subsequently resold or net proceeds are paid to the Crown. From our point of view, it's ex extremely important to retain the integrity of the city to sea corridor that runs along the Avon Otakro River. It is imperative that purely commercial drivers do, no, do not take precedence over environmental, cultural and social benefits, which is very significant and quantifiable economic value. And Ashley alluded to some of that previously. We recommend innovative approaches to increasing housing stock and improving property values in the fl eastern flatland suburbs in the long term. Approaches that do not require very costly land remediation and do not further expose communities to risks of natural hazard. We've been through in a very traumatic experience, those of us that were red zoned along the eastern corridor there. We don't want to see that, rep that, that, that repeated in the future for our children. We therefore do not favour significant residential redevelopment within the Avon Otakura Red Zone. To us, these lands are not just real estate. They're not just part of the Crown Estate. They are part of our collective experience, our emotional history and our neighbourhood, and they're part of our backyard, and we want to say in their future. There is need for clear leadership and agreed vision for Christchurch. The recovery to date has been characterised by a lack of cohesive collaborative leadership, although I must admit I saw signs and a glimmer of hope in the words of uh, the Mayor this morning, and I hope that continues and is realised. And there's been no attempt by central, local or regional government to develop 
a unifying, overarching, clear vision for, for Christchurch, for the eastern suburbs, or for the red zone lands, let alone one that includes and is agreed by the people of Christchurch. The only leadership and vision that has emerged has been from the communities themselves. The Act must provide for this to be acknowledged, to be embraced, to be empowered, and to be resourced. Because without any support for community leadership, without an agreed vision that, that we all have a say in, the regeneration of Christchurch will lack community ownership, will lack integrity, will lack direction, and will lack sustainable momentum. In short, it will fail. Local communities must be at the heart of the regeneration. There is little provision for communities to participate in regeneration as it is, as it is currently drafted. Limited public consultation where we get an opportunity to comment on a predefined plan doesn't cut the mustard. International best practice community engagement is necessary and must be required by the Act. It must be meaningful, accessible, inclusive and have influence. It can be all of these and still be focused and be expedient. This kind of consultation is not inclusive or accessible. Not many people have the confidence or the, the are articulate enough to feel comfortable in this situation. I don't feel comfortable in this situation. It's very intimidating. This is not what public consultation is about. In, either, in our experience, neither central nor local government can, can engage with communities well. Again, the best examples of good community engagement have come from the communities themselves. And good examples of that in the recovery has been the works and efforts of CANCERN. Finally, I'd just like to say that the communities must be allowed to re-engage with the red zone lands. For the past four to five years, the public has been locked out of the vacant red zone lands and there have been good health and safety reasons for this. However, those lands have now been cleared. Then there's no real reason that remains for those uh, lands to be no man's lands and be continue to be a scar that runs through the heart of the East, a, a, a daily reminder of what happened five years ago. If communities are to be activated to participate in informed future use discussions, particularly around the red zone lands, then they must be allowed to re-engage with the lands. Locking them out of the lands is not the answer. Interim access to the lands must now be un now be not unreasonably withheld. Interim community uses should be encouraged and enabled and resourced. Without this, community well-being will continue to be heavily impacted and social regeneration will be impeded in the eastern suburbs. Thank you. Evan, thank you very much. Members' questions? Nook? Sure, Evan. Sure. Um, thank you for, uh, for your submission. And um, even also with the previous one, um, there is a very clear message about um, the involvement, particularly around the environmental part of the regeneration. Um, do you think, though, in the because this bill um, really supports okay the regeneration of Greater Christchurch through, and there's a couple of perp there's some purposes there. Um, two of them I thought that was um, really um, important, particularly where. Um, the previous submission and your submission is coming from is around um, enabling community participation in the planning of the regeneration of uh, Greater Christchurch. So that community participation and then uh, recognising um, the local leadership actually within there in that sort of strategic partners. So there are sort of two already that actually covers, um, you know, even though it's general, am I hearing that you want to actually a lot more specific um, uh, within the purposes? Yes, uh, it, 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 within the purposes, you'll see in our written submission, we've, we've mm. asked for a sixth purpose, which is the very first one, mm. which um, focuses on the regeneration of the environment and social and cultural regeneration. Um, we think that it needs to be specifically um, mentioned as a purpose because Many of the powers depend on whether they are actually fulfilling a purpose. Without it being explicitly mentioned there, then there's no requirement for any of the powers to fulfil any purpose that, which involves regeneration of, of the environment. 
or yes. indeed cultural or social regeneration. Okay, can I just, one more question? So um, uh, within that, um, the uh, sort of inclusion um, as a major stakeholder of Tūnung or Naitahu, um, you know, as part of one of those great drivers um, around um, environmental regeneration, I mean, go back to the, the Naitahu claim, it was based actually on that environmental protection um, of resources, uh, landscapes and that. So um, do you think that that actually having Tūrunanga or Naitahu there actually is a, is a big sort of step forward because particularly when you look at those areas that um, you, know, you operate in, I mean, go back to 1956 when um, under, the Capital, under the Public Works Act, the final sort of remnants of Naitahu land in that area was taken um, to build the Bromley sewer plant. Um, so we, that's why I'm saying is that is you know the more input you know particularly from Naitahu um, would be important, particularly when you look at historical. Uh, I would absolutely agree with that, and that's why um, we have uh, the, the, um, under the underlying um, parts of the Avon vision is the restoration of Mahinga Kai throughout the corridor and throughout Christchurch, and we work closely with Naitahu and Naitahuri in uh, the Mahinga Kai Exemplar Project, for example, at Anzac Drive. But yeah, we certainly acknowledge that, and it does give us some comfort that Naitahu is one of the partners in, 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 in within the Regenerate Christchurch proposal. Um, but uh, we would still like it explicitly mentioned that the natural environment needs to be part of the regeneration process. Okay, kia ora. Last, kia ora. Quick, last quick question, Eugenie. Um, thank you, Evan. Um, given the 18,500 signature petition, um, the very poor water quality in the Otakaro Avon, which was front page of the press yesterday. Why do you think the, that Sierra and the current regime has ignored that desire for a river park and has spent so much money in the central city rather than on the whole length of the river? I think from the, for, the, for the past five years, the emphasis has been on the things that can be done quickly. Um, the, it, it does, we do appreciate it does take time to go through a process of vacating lands, demolishing houses, um, and then providing, doing further treatment to the lands, although we're not necessarily happy with the type of treatment that's happened. We've certainly been um, advocating strongly for retention to trees and, and the uh, encouragement of regeneration of, 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 of native flora um, and habitat. Um, but I... I I think the, the the city did need to get on its feet, and part of that is is the the, the CBD. I don't think any of us five years ago thought it was going to take us this long to get this far. Um, we always thought something would happen soon. I think um, to be realistic, it's still going to be another three or four years before we see anything happening on the ground. That's why we think interim use of the red zone lands is really critical for those for the welfare of those communities, um, and that's going to be um, require some funding and support from from um, from central and local government to make it happen. And could we have a copy of your presentation too, please? Sure. Thanks. Evan, um, thank you very much for your uh, time today. Uh, we certainly appreciate you presenting on behalf of the network and for the written submission as well. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Very much appreciate it. I'd like to call to the table now, please, Environment Canterbury, uh, Professor Skelton and uh, Chrissy Williams.